With the Air 3 finally being released out for the public by DJI, I'm sure the question, should I upgrade coming from an Air 2S, will be a very popular one. To help you decide, I've been testing side by side the Air 2S and the Air 3 for the past couple of weeks and I've been thinking what are the major things that make the Air 3 an upgrade, what are the shortcomings that it has compared to the Air 2S and ultimately whether you should upgrade to an Air 3. Let's get started. So first, let's address all the changes that the Air 3 brings to this platform. And as usual, I'll have all of these things listed as chapters below, so you can quickly navigate to the section that interests you the most. Starting out with the dual lens camera system, because this is a huge thing for the Air 3, as this feature has been reserved for the bigger drones, such as the Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Pro. Well, now we have it in the Air 3 as well, and we have a wide angle 1X 24 millimeter uh, lens with an aperture of f1.8 which promises to have a lot better uh, performance in low light situations and we have the 3x 70 millimeter medium telephoto lens which compresses the background and brings out the subject a whole lot more and makes it a little bit more interesting a lot easier to focus on that specific object and can really diversify your shots. Now I tried both cameras, the Air 2S and the Air 3 side by side at the same location, same conditions, automatic camera settings and I want to play a little sample video for you so you can see what the differences are and then we'll talk about it. As you can see, we have very similar shots, but very different shots at the same time. And what I mean by that is that the quality is great for both cameras. If you only have one of these cameras, I'm sure you'll be very happy with it. However, when you put them side by side, you are starting to see some differences that are just hard to ignore. And one of the major differences that I personally notice is that the dynamic range of the Air 3 is much, much better compared to the Air 2S. You can see so much more detail in the shadows, more specifically, the highlights are just as good on both drones, but when it comes to the shadows, you see how much darker they are on the Air 2S. And on the Air 3, you just have a lot more visibility, a lot more detail, and a lot more sharpness in those uh, areas of your shots. So that makes the Air 3 a whole lot better looking in my opinion and keep in mind I've been shooting in flat color profile for both so I can get the maximum dynamic range from, from both drones. I don't want to just stick it into normal and show you the, the baked results. This has been shot in the flattest color profile so decent alike on the Air 2S and D-Log M on the Air 3. I have lots for both of these drones so you can get those if you are interested to color grade your footage with a click of a button but even if you don't want to buy a lot and you want to grade it yourself it's a lot easier to do it on the Air 3 because you have a lot more dynamic range and it's easier to retain those details. Now when it comes to nighttime it's night and day difference between the Air 3 and the Air 2S uh, and that is because of night mode. Night mode is a feature that we've seen on Mavic 3, Mavic 3 Classic and Mavic 3 Pro. Now we have it on the Air 3 as well and it's a game changer for flying at night because it introduces a higher maximum ISO value and at the same time it applies some mild noise reduction to your footage so the end result straight out of the SD card looks a whole lot better 
and you just have a clearer, cleaner and smoother footage that just has a lot more detail. Whereas on the Air 2S, for example, you have a lot of dark spots where you just simply cannot see anything. And that's just how it is on uh, this drone. Now, there is a lot of talk uh, about the sensor size, something that people have been very concerned about. The Air 2S has a one inch sensor, whereas on the Air 3, we have a one over 1.3 inch sensor uh, that works the same on both lenses. So both lenses use the same sensor and they have exactly the same settings that you can use, exactly the same color profiles. And generally, if you shoot with both lenses, it will be a lot easier to color grade later and just have that uniformity in your footage. Whereas on the Air 2S, of course, you only have one lens, so there is nothing to worry about there. However, this one inch sensor is not really the key here because the sensor size when it comes to uh, technology is not the biggest thing. Obviously, uh, when you compare the newest technology, one inch sensor will be a lot better working on an older technology that uses again, one inch sensor. So here we are seeing exactly that we see that the with the technology advancement, we are having better results from a smaller sensor compared to a bigger sensor, but with uh, older technology that's two years old. And that makes a difference. Two years is a lot of time when it comes to developing the lenses and the imaging systems. So for me, the sensor size is not exactly the thing that I want to focus on that much because it's not everything. It's really how you use it, what settings you use. And even with automatic camera settings, you can see that we have better results because of technology, because of software and how it has been developed on the Air 3. However, there is an area where the Air 2S is definitely the winner, and that is the resolution because it shoots in higher resolution, it shoots in 5.4K 30 frames per second, whereas we have a maximum resolution of 4K 60 frames per second on the Air 3. So this is where DJI kind of went back and reduced the resolution to just 4K. We don't have 5K anymore, which is a bummer. I would have loved to have 5K uh, 30 frames per second on this drone, for example, and not just 4K 60. However, the 4K 60 frames per second on the Air 3 uh, offers no crop and has an HDR option, which is HLG, whereas on the Air 2S, you have a small crop if you want to use HDR. Another area where we are seeing some improvements when it comes to the camera is the fact that we can now use vertical orientation on the Air 3, something we've seen on the Mini 3 Pro, for example, we have it here as well. However, the camera this time does not rotate to, to become vertical, but it uses the sensor to crop from the sides and also gain a little bit of height, both from the top and bottom portion of your video. So if you're planning to use the video to post on your social media platforms, you can enter vertical orientation and that's going to be in 2.7K 60 frames per second maximum resolution and frame rate. And finally, when it comes to the camera, if you are into making large panoramas with the Air 2S, you have a great amount of resolution if you are shooting uh, in panorama mode. However, with the Air 3, it's a step above that and you have a massive resolution, uh, a, a whole lot larger maximum resolution size from the Air 3. If you are into creating those huge panoramic style photos, you can take advantage of that. And if you want to maybe print those panoramas, if you want to have a physical print of your photos, this will be a massive help with this huge resolution that you have in your hands. Comparing the photos side by side from these two drones, there really isn't that much of a difference, although the Air 3 has an option to shoot 12 megapixel photos or 48 megapixel photos, and on the Air 2S, you have 20 megapixel photos. Something small, which I think it's interesting, it makes a difference, some scenarios can get you out of trouble, is the maximum ascending and descending speed on the Air 3, which is 10 meters per second, whereas on the Air 2S, it's six meters per second, both for going up and going down. And when I say this can quickly get you out of trouble, I mean it in situations where you're shooting and there is a flock of birds randomly appearing out of nowhere and they're really aggressive towards your drone. And uh, I've been in situations like this many, many times and I'm sure many of you have been as well. In that situation, the best thing you can do is quickly go up because the birds are having harder time to go up than to go down. So when you 
Switch this into sport mode and go up as quickly as possible. You can escape from a possible danger with these birds, a possible problem of damaging or losing your drone altogether because these birds can get, get really, really aggressive. And I have some people, some friends that have told me they've lost their drones because of that. So this can really save you uh, in a pinch situation. The next thing which has been significantly improved on the Air 3 compared to the Air 2S is the transmission system. 04 versus 03. And the maximum flight range that you can expect from the 04 transmission system is up to 20 kilometers, whereas on the Air 2S we have a maximum flight distance of up to 12 kilometers. And don't get me wrong, no one should go that far with their drone. However, what that means is that in areas where we have a lot of signal breakup and a lot of signal interference with older generation drones, you would have a lot more problems to, to have a regular flight even if you are 500 meters away whereas on a newer generation drone like the air 3 even in those same conditions the signal strength would be so much better that you will experience no issues whatsoever now the air 2s has a great obstacle avoidance system however it's not omnidirectional it misses some sensors from the side meaning that if you are flying sideways you can potentially hit an obstacle without the drone ever detecting it this has been fixed on the air 3 which offers omnidirectional obstacle avoidance and especially when you combine that with the active track system which of course can be used both in 1x and 3x lens mode this is a game changer because you can simply relax knowing that the drone will detect the obstacle without hitting it and even if you are using the zoomed in 3x medium telephoto lens the drone can add that parallax that compression effect and still be looking out for itself automatically because when you enter that 3x mode everything becomes a little bit more you know compressed and it's harder to to see obstacles uh, on your way sometimes it's harder to notice where exactly you are because uh, obviously you're, you're using a zoomed lens and it's not the same as using the 1x lens where you can see all the obstacles around you uh, so now this is a great great thing for the air 3 as you can just simply use the, the, the lenses, both lenses at the same time, not having to worry about hitting an obstacle and just get that footage. And when talking about getting that footage, uh, something I forgot to mention earlier is the fact that with, regardless whether you're using active track, whether you're using spotlight or any other intelligent flight mode, you can edit and tweak all of your settings on the Air 3, meaning that you can flip between lenses, you can switch to HLG or d -Log M, you can use normal color profiles, you can use pretty much any resolution that the drone offers and frame rate as well, and you're not limited in any way. That's not the case for the Air 2S. If you want to use Spotlight, for example, you can't do that in 5.4K. Uh, you need to bump it down to 4K. So that's kind of limiting. Here, you don't have those limits anymore, which is a great step from DJI. And speaking about intelligent flight modes and things that you can do on these drones, there are a couple of new intelligent flight modes that have been added to the Air 3 coming from the Mavic 3 series, which I'm very, very happy to see here on this platform. And they are Waypoints, Cruise Control and Advanced Return to Home. With Waypoints, you can create kind of like a little map of different points that you want the drone to go through. And it will go through them very, very smoothly, creating repeatable paths, which is super cool and handy to have. This is super useful for solo creators if you want to be in the shot without having to hold the remote and ruining the shot. And that way you can do some really cool creative waypoints that you can repeat and shoot uh, the footage with you inside. Next, we have cruise control, which is a super simple, but very, very nice feature to have that allows you to simply lock the current speed of the drone and just let go of the remote and the drone will keep heading towards that same point that you have selected, the same direction, and it will keep that same speed that you have been using without you having to hold the remote. So DJI is definitely making it a lot easier to kind of have a lot more choices when it comes to how you want to use your creativity. If you want to include yourself in the footage, if you want to get some creative shots with the drone, you have a lot more different ways to achieve that. And these intelligent flight modes are not a gimmick. They are super useful. And previously, some of the intelligent flight modes that we've had on previous drones were not 
exactly something that I would be using because they were limiting, they were not allowing me to shoot in flat color profile, for example, or they were not working in certain uh, resolutions or frame rates. Now you don't have that issue anymore and just everything works and everything kind of feels polished because it's coming from the Mavic 3 series. So they had some time to tweak those things. If there were some bugs, they were ironed out and now everything's just working smoothly straight from day one. And finally, a topic that shouldn't be overlooked is the flight time. We have a massive flight time improvement on the Air 3, which is up to 46 minutes of flight time compared to up to 31 minutes on the Air 2S, which is 48% more on the Air 3. Now, of course, we have a bigger battery with a different latching mechanism, which is a lot safer. I wasn't really happy to return back to the Air 2S with this battery mounting uh, on top because it just doesn't feel that safe to, to put it on top of the drone. You know, sometimes it doesn't latch too well. We've seen some problems with that in the past. Well, here with this new latching mechanism and with the battery just sliding inside the, the body of the drone, it's a whole lot easier. And just the battery itself is just a lot bigger. Uh, and, and that makes, of course, for this total flight time improvement. And finally, I want to quickly share an opinion that I have after flying these drones back to back, uh, one after another. And that is the fact that the Air 3 just feels a whole lot more smoother in the air. Uh, it doesn't have that rawness, that aggressiveness that the Air 2S has. Both of them are on stock settings and they just feel different. Uh, the, the Air 3 just feels a lot more fluid. Uh, I, I think DJI has just been perfecting their game when it comes to tuning these drones out of the box. They fly great. You probably don't need to tweak that much on the Air 3 to get perfect results. Whereas on the Air 2S, you kind of need to tame its aggressiveness because it's kind of too aggressive at times. And that's in normal mode. I'm not even talking about sport mode. So yeah, that's just something that I noticed and wanted to share as well. With that being said, guys, this is everything I have for you today. I hope this video has been helpful and informative for you to decide whether you need to upgrade to the Air 3 if you're coming from the Air 2S. Let me know in the comment section below if that was the case and drop me a like if you have enjoyed the video. This is Mike from Drone Supremacy. Take care and I'll see you in the next one very, very soon. Ciao.